The model showed that each event had occurred right in the middle of the red zone. The earthquake seemed to be triggering each other like a set of falling dominoes. Following the Erzincan earthquake, a series of events zipped, or rather unzipped, the fault right the way along its length, you know, with stress being transmitted from one to the next in a most spectacular fashion. These events were not aftershocks, and they were separated from each other by years. An earthquake storm appeared to be blowing across the region. But forecasting earthquakes after the event was relatively simple. A better test would be for scientists to use the model to forecast where the storm would strike next. Our objective was to go from the 1967 earthquake to the west and to the south and include all the other earthquakes for which we had historical information into, in order to assess where stress had been transferred and what was the likely earthquake future for those regions. And when he plugged in the data, the red zone lit up over the Bay of Izmit. Home to nearly half a million people. The red zone was right over Izmit and the Bay of Izmit, and we knew a major fault capable of catastrophic earthquakes passed right through that region. Jeff and other scientists were so convinced the model was working, papers were published forecasting where the next earthquake would likely strike. They could not say when, but they spelled out the specific threat to Izmit. A catastrophic earthquake seemed to us inevitable, and this had to be published. This was published in the scientific literature, but then it was also published in the Turkish popular press the popular scientific journals, even in a newspaper, in the scientific supplement of a newspaper. I must confess, even when I read that, I said, oh, wonderful, you know, it's a scientific prediction. But it did not occur to me to say, my God, we've got to do something about it. The publication created only a ripple of interest. And for the people of Izmit, life continued as normal. Most had no idea that the ground they now walked on was under extraordinary stress. Then, in August 1999, at just past three in the morning, Jeff King's forecast came true. 